The tree is Earth's crowning glory. This living framework upholds the delicate web of life. On its fate, the planet's future hangs. Forests wrap the globe like a living, breathing skin. Great companies of trees that keep this planet healthy. These giant plants have been evolving for 400 million years, and life has flourished in their shelter. Deep in the forest, endless cycles of growth and decay continue as the earth goes through its seasons. In a northern climate, trees protect themselves against winter's cold, dry winds. Conifers are shaped to let the snow slide harmlessly off their stiff, waxy needles resistant to moisture loss. Deciduous trees shed their leaves before the snow. Evergreen or deciduous, they wait the winter out, ready for the sudden rush of spring. When the new leaves unfurl, the forest is already vigorous with life. Migrating birds return, roving inhabitants of the global forest. As summer ripens, plants and insects exchange services, each individual a minute link in the network of nature. Nothing here exists alone. All life is interlocked in mutual dependence. The dragonflies are shaped by the marsh they're part of. And the ancient environment of the forest still shapes the human species, which left it long ago. Human history is inextricably linked with the tree. For most cultures, its powerful image stands at the center, a symbol of life and knowledge for Hindus, the Mayan tree of sacrifice, the menorah, tree of light in Judaism. The fruit of this tree is the knowledge of good and evil. From our earliest beginnings, it has symbolized the source of all creation, inspiring familiar forms. Even now, in our rites of passage, we return to the guardian of life and fertility. Ancient images assert the power of nature at the center of the city's glass and steel. In a sea of traffic, trees build tranquil islands, reminders of the natural world we're part of. Today, the scanning electron microscope has penetrated the remarkable structure of wood. It's a circulation system of immense complexity piping water from the roots to the leaves and carrying away the sugars and starches that build new wood. Wood is a living reservoir of solar energy, the fuel of civilizations. Fresh air, the summer sun, and water, vital elements that interact through trees.
Water moves constantly from Earth to air and back to Earth again. The forest traps the falling rain, soaking it up like a gigantic sponge. Then slowly and steadily, it releases it into water courses. Tree roots lift the water from deep in the ground and send it up to every twig and leaf. Some creates new growth, but most is breathed back into the atmosphere, rising from the treetops like mist from a lake. Trees condition the air, absorbing carbon dioxide. They use solar energy to combine carbon and water into carbohydrates. And in this process of photosynthesis, they give off the oxygen we breathe. Dying leaves return carbon and minerals to the ground, raw material for rich, fertile soil. Rotted down, that soil is anchored by enormous root systems. It's food for forest growth, and for our growth too. Soil accumulated over centuries is cleared away in a moment. In its place, a forest of houses. All that's left of the natural world are the names. We know the value of the forest as a generous provider. But when trees become commodities, the interdependence of the forest community is often forgotten. The jack pine is an especially valuable tree. It supplies lumber for construction and work for thousands of people. But with modern machinery, the entire forest ecosystem is swept away with the trunks we need. The harvest from the forest is immense and continuous. North Americans use 500 million cubic meters of industrial wood each year. Trees transformed by the sawmill sliced into board feet. Trimmed, dried, and plain, the planks are sorted and then stacked to await their final assignment. Trees that sheltered life in the forest now become human shelter. As well as sliced, a tree, like this poplar, can be unrolled into thin strips of vertical fiber. Glued together in layers of alternating fiber directions, they form plywood, light, flexible, and strong. Wood is so versatile, we can't do without it. As our numbers grow, the pressure on forests becomes overwhelming. From forest to farmland, to townland. In the competition for space, trees lose out every time. And the impact of our rapid growth extends far beyond the limits of the city. Entire towns have been set up in the forest to satisfy our appetite for wood and its products. This is a gigantic cauldron cooking black spruce. Enormous machines, massive amounts of energy, produce one of civilization's most ephemeral substances, paper. Our world is built out of it. Packaging, newspapers, books, documents, toilet paper, necessities of modern life.
But how much of it do we waste? One edition of a major Sunday paper eats up an area of trees equivalent to 160 city blocks. Around the world, forestry is a vital human activity. But we're getting out of balance. Each year, the planet loses 12 million hectares of forest, an area about the size of England. In total, we use 3 billion tons of timber every year. Almost half of it goes to enrich our lives in the developed world. The rest of the world's wood is cut to meet very basic human needs. Here in Nepal, the mountain forests are slowly being cleared for agriculture, fodder and fuel. One third of humanity depends on firewood to cook food. In Thailand, in Papua New Guinea, trees keep the cook pot boiling, just as they do in Senegal. All across Africa, in South America, throughout Asia, this need is global. Whatever the climate, human beings need shelter. Using ancient skills on nature's most versatile material, they weave it out of wood in a thousand different ways. Unlike our wasteful society, most communities in developing countries husband their resources. Survival depends on it. Nothing's wasted, but as populations grow, everything is consumed. The falling tree may bring down with it the ecosystem it supported. Without trees, nature establishes a different balance, one that's not to our liking. Bare land, hunger, drought, tragic consequences of deforestation. This inexorable process is not confined to Africa. These dunes are in central Canada, evidence of the same mistakes. In this area, the interaction of climate, geology, and water over hundreds of thousands of years produced a light sandy soil. For centuries, it was held stable by a cedar forest. Then settlers came and cut the forest down. The fragile ecosystem collapsed. The soil began to move, eroding from around dead roots. Fences carefully placed to halt the dunes were quickly overtaken. Sand filled the roads, covered the pastures, inundated farm buildings. Sixty years ago, a different remedy was tried, planting trees. Today, the forest is back where it belongs. The trees are thriving in a habitat that suits them. Beneath their branches, the complex network of life is re-establishing itself on the stabilized sand. Thank you.
In the midst of all this growth stand eloquent reminders of the past, monuments to what was lost here. From a few sand dunes to the vast forests of North America, the needs are the same, though enormously magnified. Every year in Canada alone, more than 200 million seedlings are grown for replanting. It's part of silviculture, forest gardening on a gigantic scale. Replacing the trees we take can protect our own future by creating sustainable forestry. But growing seedlings is just the beginning of an immensely complex and expensive process. Every reforestation site is different, and trees that suit each location and meet our needs must be selected. The red oak forest here is slowly dying back. The soil's too shallow for the oaks to thrive, but it's perfect for white pine, which over time would colonize the area. The practice of silviculture speeds up the process. In the shelter of the oaks, a new forest is planted. 60 years from now, there'll be a pine forest here, which might take centuries to develop naturally. Thousands of seedlings must be planted by hand, in forest or clear cut. No machine can yet match a human being. Reforestation takes time, labor, money. And North America has more than six million square kilometers of forest. Young trees need to be free to grow, and that takes hundreds of forest workers to cut back the competition. The only alternative would be to spray with chemical herbicides. Planting and protecting the trees we want saves the rest of the forest from wholesale logging. New logging patterns let the forest regenerate itself. Large stands of trees can be left to reseed cut areas. Then they in turn are cut, a self-renewing harvest. The future depends on working with nature, not against it. Trees are not expendable. They're crucial to life on this planet. But everywhere, they're threatened. Acid rain. Careless logging, waste. Restoring the forest won't happen overnight. But think what's at stake. Trees are the time lords. 200, even a thousand years of growth. 400 million years of evolution. A leaf that lasts a season, endlessly creating life. Our society, like all human cultures, celebrates the tree of life. The Christmas tree is a contemporary expression of this ancient symbol. Once a year, we carry the forest into the city, though we may have forgotten why. Is the symbol empty now, remade in tinsel for the marketplace? Or can it inspire us to live again in balance with nature, replanting the tree of life?